We all fall off the wagon sometimes, sis, but get your butt back on the wagon. We need you here in 2020. We need you on the wagon. Everywhere. I see pretty girls. Pretty girls. All across the world. aka Lahara here today if you listen to my music thank you to everybody that had me listed as their top artist on spotify that was really really cool to see given that i've only started releasing stuff a few months ago so to think that i'm one of your most listened artists all year is just like thank you so much y'all we're in 2020 can you believe it I can't believe it. I feel like I'm in Phil of the future if y'all watch Disney Channel. Some of y'all probably don't know what that show is because I'm feeling a little old. Just a little bit. Just a little, but it's okay, y'all. Crash is the name. Phil, what's with the helmet? My mom says I'm all gas pedal and no brakes. We made it to 2020 and that's all that matters. So I gotta get the elephant out of the room and address this now. Vlogmas. We tried. You know the Bart Simpson meme where it's just like, we tried, yeah. Girl, you don't understand. I really tried this. I tried. I tried my best, y'all, but something about just when I start traveling, it's so hard. Like, if you're a YouTuber and you watch this, how do you vlog while traveling? I mean, not even vlog, but like, find time to edit. I, I think the self-control thing, because when I get around family, I just can't. I don't know, I just wanna be like around them. But it's hard, I have tons of vlog footage from the winter break that just never got uploaded after, I think this year I made it to day, what, 12 or something? But that was a lot of videos, okay, y'all? Yeah. Parting with some of it, I think physically it's gonna be very, very hard. My name is Dr. Ferguson, clinical psychologist specializing in compulsive hoarding. And there's two videos that still need a little bit of love from last year, so I'm gonna quickly shout them out. First one is reacting to you guys' biggest secrets that you submitted on Instagram while also giving some advice. And then the second one was me reacting to my very, very first makeup look I ever did on YouTube and recreating it. It was the one that got my views. Now that that's out the way, let's get into the actual video for today that has been requested on everything. I dropped a picture not too long ago that had my old undercut and then the fact that my hair is now waist length, which is just such a big accomplishment for me, y'all. I didn't even realize that my hair was waist length till I blew it out and I had to have someone double check for me because I was just like, ain't no way. Like, you know what I mean? So let's jump into these tips. Now I know some of y'all like to summarize in the comments and that is perfectly fine. I love when y'all do that, but make sure that if you see a summary in the comments, still watch the whole video because there are details that I include that are very crucial to these steps. Now I'm not just saying that to get views or nothing, like I legit really put time into these videos so that y'all can get the tea and absorb. Okay, as y'all know, my notebook. You know it's getting real when the notebook comes out. So. Number one on my list of things that I've done to grow my natural hair down to waist length and y'all see it's much fuller, much healthier. I literally said this in my last video, but, but we weren't this extreme. I broke rules, but this time I'm gonna say I broke more rules. If you watched my last video about how I grew my hair and you can see the difference between then and now is very, very astounding, y'all. I grew my hair by breaking rules. Natural hair community is really extra, y'all. Like, they really extra. They be, they be trying to tell you what to do. They be trying to tell you what you can't do. They be trying to tell you what's, what's this, what's that, what's the third. And I broke all those rules. So I think that's a really, really big thing. One of the rules I broke, I use hair grease. Like, and they always be like, grease is bad, mineral, oil, petroleum, da da da. Yes, some of those greases can be really heavy on the hair, especially some of the ones that have like the really cheap ingredients. But if you find yourself a good, good hair grease with like, that's just concentrated with a bunch of nice oils and butters and such and such, then do that. So I would do, I'd probably dedicate a whole video to hair grease since I started using it again. But locking in moisture is so imperative and that's one of the few things that actually works for me with maintaining moisture there's actually grease in this twist out i don't use it on my scalp that's glitter don't mind me new year's was fun i know i'll probably get them a chicken sandwich this one. 
All right, so another thing I broke is I use shea butter in my hair, whipped shea butter. I know that some people who've been OGs on YouTube swear by the whipped shea butter, and it's like bringing it back to the roots, y'all, because our parents, at least mine, did certain things that now I'm realizing why my hair was down my back as a kid, okay? It's because my mom knew the tea. She knew the sauce before I knew the sauce, and now I'm rediscovering the flavor of that sauce. Sauce. Sauce is forever. Number two. This one is huge. If there is one takeaway from this list that you should go home with today, it is I learned my hair's porosity, okay? Because my hair porosity has changed since I've been on YouTube. So for those of you that notice my curl pattern looks different, my hair looks thicker. Goddamn thicker than a cold bowl of mashed potatoes. Hello. Like thicker you know what i mean my curls are tighter my porosity has changed that's gonna be a whole separate video but i do have a video on youtube already where you can take a porosity quiz i personally made this quiz for y'all as something to help if you're a little on the fence about your porosity i know some people tied on the quiz if you tied i would just say go with whichever one you feel in your heart you relate to more. And if you have like two that were really neck and neck, like normal and high, just put yourself in the middle and kind of follow a little bit of what you would do per se for high porosity hair. And then, yeah, things like that. So if you've ever read a book, there's this book called The Five Love Languages. And my mom gave it to me when I was um, just starting college. And it's such a phenomenal book, it's about how basically we as people have different languages in which we communicate love and we feel and receive love. So I feel like hair porosity is a love language, you know what I mean, to your hair because this is, your porosity is how your hair receives love, but not just love because in the natural hair community, moisture is love, so they, they synonymous, okay? So hair porosity is how your hair receives moisture. Moisture is the catalyst of length retention for me. Let's see, so knowing my hair's porosity means that my hair is more thoroughly moisturized. This twist out is several days old, it's starting to get build up and stuff, but if you actually feel my hair, it feels soft. It feels so soft and so moisturized, and that is because I know now that my hair is low porosity, so I'm actually moisturizing my hair in the proper way for my hair's porosity it's made such a difference now here's why this is important okay you might hear the word porosity and get intimidated and think that's that natural hair mumbo jumbo i don't need to know all that sis like keep that i'm already stressed no knowing your hair's porosity is going to take the stress away so now you have the cheat codes okay my wash days are quicker i know they're gonna work based on the ingredients in my products and how i apply them now it's just giving me that confidence i know my hair and i never thought i would say that okay your porosity also can change with color treating and all these different things so be on the lookout and check in with yourself like every six months to a year and reevaluate like, is my hair the same porosity that it was when I started my journey? So here's why porosity helps with length retention. Everyone's hair grows unless I said you have some sort of illness or birth defect or something that is preventing your hair from growing. But a lot of people make it seem like it's because you're black and it's not. We talked about this in the last video. Genetics is just the rate at which your hair grows, but your hair is growing nonetheless. So it's all about length retention. Knowing your hair's porosity means your hair is more moisturized. Hair being more moisturized means that the wash day is easier and there's less detangling because your hair is hydrated. More hydrated hair with less detangling means less breakage. Less breakage means more length retention. Amen, can we get an amen in the church today, okay? Are we preaching or not? Give this video a thumbs up if we're preaching to you right now about the natural hair game. Step three that I have done to maintain my length. I did this in college and had the same results my freshman year when my hair got pretty long before that stylist came and cut my hair off. She cut six inches, y'all. I'm still, oof. PTSD, still shook. I am, no, literally like that was very traumatic. Even though it doesn't seem like it's like, oh, it's just hair. At the time, that was so, so traumatic because it was part of my identity. Now it's not so much. I feel like my hair and I are 
separate. Y'all feel me? Am I being weird? No, it's okay. All right, so the third thing that I did is wearing my hair in twists for days at a time and stretch styles. And now for video references, I have a mini twist video on how I do mini twists, which sometimes I do those, sometimes I do medium, sometimes I do large. It depends on how I'm feeling. And then I also have a video about how I wear my hair under wigs, which I do not do cornrows anymore. A lot of people are like, do cornrows, do cornrows. My hair is so thick. That does not work for me anymore. Everyone swears that I should do cornrows, but guess what? You can't just do like six, seven plaits and then your hair is just laying flat. No, 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 My hair be looking like some, some egg rolls sitting on top of my head when I do cornrows because of how thick it is. So, if y'all seen that video, some people are like, girl, just cornrow your hair. Girl, you just, you cornrow your, my hair, your hair. Mm, mm, it don't work for me no more simple as that and i know it don't work for some other people out there with the care so yeah all right y'all so in doing my twists that was a huge 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 part of my hair growth journey by accident this was not planned this was out of sheer laziness now i said this in my last video but it's like i said we dive in deeper than my last video it's still good to go watch that video because there's some tips that won't be in this video and vice versa so when i felt lazy we all don't feel like dealing with our hair at some point or another so for some that might mean a messy bun for some that might mean different things for me when i don't feel like dealing with my hair i will twist my hair up with a nice luxurious hair butter whether it's homemade store-bought i will twist my hair up put all this love and care into it to tangle it real nice girl put some oil on it to seal it and then i will sit under this is this is the real g part okay i'm gonna sit under my steamer with those twists in and i steam my twists let me tell y'all if y'all have felt your hair moisturized before speak sister speak go steam your twist out i'm telling you and then i do half if you well actually i'm not even gonna explain how i steam go watch my deep conditioning video and you'll see how I steam versus like the times I do and all that stuff. Also for my twists, very controversial, but I grease my ends. I literally, after I do my twist out, I put a little bit of, you know, hair grease on the ends to seal in that moisture because your ends tend to be a higher porosity than your roots. So if you're a low porosity girl like me or guy, or non-binary but you just so happen to be low porosity let me tell you grease saves the day okay because um these ends can lose moisture just like high porosity hair your ends can lose moisture um very quickly no matter what your hair porosity is so you want to have some nice thick luxurious sealing agent to keep them moisturized okay the next thing this is going to sound very very cheesy but it's true i have a better relationship with myself okay so that has helped my hair flourish because i see my hair as like i said a separate entity but it's still an extension of me right so i feel like how i treat my hair is also a reflection of how i'm feeling about myself as a whole because it's an extension of me how i'm treating my nails how i'm treating my hair how i'm treating my body if i'm moisturizing what are, you know like are you feeling me or are you picking up what i'm putting down okay So I feel like having a better relationship with my hair and myself, I would literally, the way I detangle is gentler. You know what I'm saying? The way I touch my hair, the way I hold my hair, the way I put my hair up at night, the way I, I advocate for my hair. If I am about to go to sleep and I think I'm about to just sleep wild and crazy and I don't have a satin pillowcase on, I will literally go in my bedroom closet and I will throw my silk robe on top of my pillow if i'm really that lazy i don't have a bonnet i don't feel like putting on a scarf y'all i will take a legit robe and sleep on that just because i, I want to advocate for my hair's health and it's something i'm working towards so why not like you're gonna spend all these hours taking care of your hair and then go to sleep and not protect it like you just gonna ruin all your hard work like that, sis? No, we're not doing that in 2020, okay? All right, another thing that I found very much helpful, I'm not saying that this particularly contributed to hair growth, but it was 
so helpful. I felt like my hair was stronger. My hair had more definition. And overall, I would just, again, this whole thing is more so about length retention than growth because your hair is gonna grow at the rate your hair is gonna grow. Clay washes. I love, love, love doing clay washes and clay deep conditioners. Because my hair is low porosity, bentonite clay can actually change the porosity of your hair over time, so that might be a hair myth. Go research that though. This is all just personal experience, y'all. I'm not no scientist. Bentonite clay actually helps my products absorb better after I rinse it out um, because my cuticle does feel a little bit raised. My hair feels clean, squeaky clean, and then I have ringlet curls with no product. Love, 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 love doing bentonite clay deep conditioning masks. They are essential, okay? Next thing that leads me into is deep conditioning. I just I just committed to myself. I said, I'm gonna make this a ritual. I started pre-pooing and deep conditioning again. We all fall off the wagon sometimes, sis, but get your butt back on the wagon. We need you here in 2020. We need you on the wagon to success, okay? No more stress. We trying to look blessed, okay? Make sure you are deep conditioning your hair and properly for your hair's porosity. Go take the porosity quiz. I'm not playing with you. I'm not playing with you. Okay, go take your porosity quiz and come back. Cause we gotta talk. We gotta talk about this hair. Last two tips, I sacrifice being cute, okay? Sometimes the cute style isn't the healthy style. Sometimes the cute style rips the edges, rips the roots. It pulls your hairline back. <laughs> And sis, it is not cute, okay? Well, what I'll say is I sacrifice being cute in the short term to be cute in the long term, okay? So I think um, just less short-term gratification with these tight eyebrow raising ponytails. You know, when I do ponytails, I try to moisturize my hair. I sacrifice being cute. Those tight styles that aren't conducive, I either found alternate ways to do them that were a little bit healthier, or I just scrapped them all together, okay? You wanna make sure that if you're protective styling, you're actually protecting your hair. And you know, not just, it's not an excuse to be lazy, y'all. It's an excuse to be lazy responsibly. You feel me? Because I know this is a lot of work. But be lazy responsibly, and I think that's the motto of 2020. Um, and then I guess the last thing would be to believe. I know that's gonna sound cheesy, also, oil is your friend. Just sneaking that in there. That's not even on my list, but oil is your friend. Oil your scalp, keep that scalp moisturized and healthy. But yeah, to just believe that you can grow your hair because I feel like there's a lot of negativity and doubt around hair growth, especially in the black community. Um, now, not so much, it's changing a lot, but there's still a lot of naysayers. You know, you got that good hair. You got the da 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 And I'm like, no, I've got 4A, 4B hair. It is good hair. Four, any kind of hair. Three, any kind of hair. I just always say this healthy hair is good hair. Hair that you love is good hair. Hair that makes you happy is good hair. So if your hair is platinum and bleach and you literally feel healthy and happy about it, you have good hair. So it's like, I do. Good hair is hair that's healthy and makes you happy, okay? You have to believe that you can actually grow your hair because once you believe it, I feel like it's just a manifestation. I don't know if y'all believe in manifesting, but I do. And it's to the point where if you believe it enough, it's almost like I forgot I was trying to grow my hair and I got more engrossed in the process of doing my hair and I fell back in love with my hair. And I, I had a period of time where I didn't love my hair anymore and it kind of, kind of sucked i wanted to just tuck it away and not not for just societal reasons but i just felt like when my porosity switched it really made me take a hit i didn't know what to do anymore and i was supposed to be this natural hair guru and i am just my hair was feeling like hey i was at a loss for words no products were working everything was just just terrible so i think relearning my hair and taking that time out now i am in love with my hair i still wear wigs but that's on those lazy weeks like i said so if you all enjoyed this video comment some of your favorite ways to retain length down here because it's not about the growth it's about the length retention in my personal opinion oh a lot of y'all asked how often i trim how often I feel like it. Honestly, I just pay attention to detangling in the shower. Also, properly moisturize your hair because you might not need a trim. It might just be that your hair is really, really freaking dehydrated. So, we gonna get on to the porosity moisture tips in another video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm so happy it's 2020. It's really late in my house right now. So, I'm about to go wash my face, go to bed, 
and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and we are going to be getting into things 2020 i'm excited i i overthought a lot in 2019 i'm just gonna have fun this year all right y'all i love y'all peace out and gang gang and i'll see you on my next video from the brie hall people to the smartista beauty people to the lahara people we all one big family Thank y'all for rocking with me through all my identities and color switches and textures and life experiences. Y'all are the realest and the, the people that have been rocking with me for years. I just, I appreciate you. I love you. And let's, let's do this. Let's do this right. Let's take care of ourselves.